make sure the bores are clean. Slip the bearing in like so. On the thrust bearing, you look at this side versus this side. This side's flat. This side is concaved. That goes against the crankshaft and it's going to set. Going to set right there on the lip. You see the lip right here? It's got to set on. What we can do is use some Silaglide or some oil. Help hold those in there. Okay, we're going to use this stuff. Take and put a dab back here. All the way around. Set him right here. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Like so. Okay, then we're going to get our Lucas oil. Our engine oil, essentially. Don't want to get it in the bolt holes. We want to get it mainly on the bearings themselves. Uh, 105. Engine assembly grease probably works better than anything. And we're going to come over here and we're going to make sure all our crank journals are clean. Compressed air works really well. This one was already pretty clean, so I'm just going to wipe it real quick. And we're going to go ahead and put a strap here and a strap here. It's on the number one and number six rod bearing throws. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put our crankshaft in. So I've got it suspended on both sides here and there. It only fits in one way. Normally, you'd want to pick up here and here if we could but this particular crankshaft won't go in that way just to keep it from bending and that type but we're going to drop this crankshaft down in here so we're going to have to twist it Here, these bearings are trying to push themselves out, so we've got to make sure that sits in there correctly. Make sure the thrust bearings didn't fall out. Okay, and then we're going to get a screwdriver, push those bearings back and forth, and make sure they are seated correctly. See where I'm at here. Make sure these are even. And there, there, there. I like to shove them back and forth just a little bit to make sure that they're seated. The bearings are seated in there well. See how this one right here is not quite seated. Push that down in there, push that down in there. And then we're ready to put our caps on. Okay, normally before we put the crank in, we would plastic gauge it. We're going to use, uh, this is what it looks like. You see there's the measurements right across here. That's metric. I flip it over, this is a four to nine thousandths of an inch. Basically what you do, this little blue strip here, we're gonna cut a piece about that long and we're gonna lay it right across here, depending on what our spec's supposed to be. Put our main bearing cap on, torque it down, and then we would take it off and measure how wide that strip is. There's a blue, we have a red that's two to six thousandths. We have a yellow that's nine to twenty, which is huge. And then we have a green that is one to three thousandths. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we need to go through and put what we call peanut butter, what Detroit calls it. We're going to put some on the threads, like that. Then we're going to come up under here, under the head. That's the most important part. Put a little on the washer as well. Do the same thing on the other one. We're going to make sure it's good and clean. Um, but for now, uh, it's, it's clean enough. There's no dirt on it. It's mostly oil, so I'm not worried about it. Put that in there like so. And then we're going to put the appropriate cap in the appropriate place right here. Now, the other trick is we want to make sure that our tang, that you can see right here, after we put our new main bearing in, and our tang right here are on the same side. So it always goes tang to tang, okay? We also want to put some oil on the bearing, like so. Like I say, that 105 engine assembly lubricant works really well. 
Then we're going to get these started, and I'm going to tap that in there. And then we want to do here, 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 like a crisscross pattern. Doesn't really matter, just as long as you do the two evenly. Then we want to come in here and mark each one that we've done. Make sure your marks are facing the same way, especially if it's torque turn. If you had these marks going this way and these marks say going this way, it kind of looks to me like they're not torque. Then I'm going to mark all the caps. Okay, they're all marked. Then we want to check for in play. Checking back and forth. I'll have to get a dial indicator out in a minute. But it spins by hand, so I must have done something right. Okay, I'm going to zero the indicator. And I'm going to pry it crankshaft back and forth, and it looks like I've got about eight thousandths, looks like. The spec, I believe, is eight to twelve thousandths. We'll go look it up in the book here in just a second, but that's how you check in play.